All right, let's start because the mission that Moshe Rabbeinu is ordered to carry out is understandable. This is the first time and only time Moshe Rabbeinu will not listen to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's amazing. He's about to depart from this world. And this is the moment he's going to choose not to listen to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You know, we understand when you're young, you have a hot blood, you have everything. We can see and we can make mistakes. But when you get older and you get cooler, you know, usually you're much more docile, you know, listening, accepting, life beating you already, you're very flexible. But Moshe Rabbeinu, you're only a few days, 11 days from departing this world. This is the moment you're going to choose not to listen to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Let's go, let's go into the Psukim. Because, you know, I like to bring everything to the Pasuk. So, as I was speaking to Jeff, this is the Pasha that's not ending. It starts in Balak. He goes into Pinchas. He goes into Matos. And afterward, we're going to have a few words in Devarim, but really Devarim is what revealed all these parashas. Had Moshe Rabbeinu not revealed the idea of Bilam, we would have never known what was cooking behind the scene with Bilam and Balak. So let's see the mission HaKadosh Baruch Hu has for Moshe Rabbeinu this week. And we will see things are extremely, extremely strange. Kodesh Baruch Hu says, Nekoim, avenge. I should have called it that one. This is Moshe Rabbeinu. Midrash says, the Zoya says, Lecha Yaus, to you it befits to take the vengeance of the Bnei Yisrael because they were after you, as we saw during Pasha's Balak. I'm just going to repeat a few things that we said in Pasha's Balak in order to refresh you the memory. So Moshe Rabbeinu is ordered to go to war. To go to war for what? To avenge the Bnei Yisrael. We lost 24,000 Bnei Yisrael during the Magaifa. Moshe Rabbeinu has to reclaim his vengeance from the Midianim for this 24,000. That's what he says here, me'es ha-midyanim, from the Midianim. Have you seen one Pasuk? One Pasuk mentioning that the Midianim were doing znus? One Pasuk that they sent their woman, you know, it's, we saw last week the Pasuk where is it? I thought I left it. Oh, Vayeshev Israel Bashitim. Israel was sitting or uh, uh, camped in the Shitim. Vayachel Am Liznois El Benois. Moy of the only time we're gonna see Znus is with Benois Moy of. Then Vayitzamed Israel Le Baal Peoyer. Israel got attached to Baal Peoyer. Period. We have nothing else besides Cosby, you know, and, and we're going to get to it uh, in, in a few moments because I have the puzzle. So Nekoim Nikmas Ben Israel from the Midianim? No. What have they done? Oh, because they talk behind the scene. After talking, you want to you go and kill them? The Midrash is going to say, is going to say that every tent that the Bnei Israel went in after killing the men at war. There was a woman and a woman with her children. And you know what she said to them? She said, don't you have mercy? Aren't you known as the nation of mercy? And I, a creature from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, 
We say every day three times, Verachamov al kol maisov. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has mercy on all his creatures. He doesn't say tzaddik, he doesn't say rasha, he says maisov. Anyone that was created with the hand of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu has mercy. And they were asking for mercy. You know what they've done? No mercy. What have these people done so bad that we have to act in a way which is totally unnatural from the Bnei Israel? We haven't seen one pasuk where they have seen. And what have they seen? And then very bizarrely, HaKadosh Baruch Hu connects the fact that Moshe will depart this world to this whole Maise of avenging the Bnei Israel. What's the connection? I don't mind you say it after the parasha, you know, in, in, in the vicinity of this parasha. I do have a problem. You put it in the same pasuk right after blowing my mind off by stating the Midianim have to be uh, bearing, the, uh, bearing the, 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 the blow about what happened to the Bnei Isra, and right away you connect. So automatically, you can avoid telling me that here there's a tremendous connection between the departure of Moshe Rabbeinu and the Midian. Pasuk doesn't say anything. HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells Moshe Rabbeinu even how to do it. By Daber, uh, sorry, Moshe Rabbeinu is going to repeat exactly what he heard from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to the Bnei Israel. And this is how he repeats it. By Daber Moshe Elohim Leimor. So he spoke to the to the people telling them, Hecholtzu me'itchem. This word, Hecholtzu, Chalutzei Tzava, you know, we have to define, what's his root? Is it coming from Atzlacha? If it's coming from, so, so bring out successful people, or you mean like Chalitza, when you separate a, 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 a brother that had, that died, Chaman Itzlan, and, and he has another brother and they didn't have children. The first couple didn't have children. So he can do yibum. He can marry his wife's sister, <clears throat> his wife, his brother's wife. At that point, if he doesn't want or she doesn't want, they do chalitza. So what is... This strange word that he's telling me here, Moshe, chaltsu me'itchem. Okay. Anashim latzava. I'm not going to go into this one tonight. Ve'yihyu al Midian. And they will be on top of Midian. Don't you think it would have been more, I mean, proper to say, and they will fight Midian, they will decimate Midian. Ve'yihyu, remember, it's a static verb. It's a changing state. They will become on top of Midian. What do you mean? They, they, it's, remember when we say Vatehi Hamagefa, the Magefa became, it's, it's like the, 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 the subject is here and there's only a change inside, a change of title. So the Yihyu, it's a transformation of something that is currently there. So what it means, ve'yihyu al midyan? Losses to give, nikmas Hashem. Oh, 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 Hashem say nikmas ben Israel. You say nikmas Hashem? Be midyan. Again, I'm going to repeat you. If you don't didn't understand the first time and the second time and the third time, I'm going to repeat you one more time. It's be in midyan. <laughs> Okay, Elef Lamate, I'm not, you know, I'm just going to brush it up as Hashem by the end of this year because here there's a tremendous soid. Elef Lamate, Elef Lamate. Big Machloikis, he means 2,000, he means 1,000. I think I'm going to make peace among everybody here with a shot from the Gale Razi or the Talmud of Daria Kodesh. Lechol Matois Bene Israel from all the Shvatim over the Bnei Israel, Tishlechu Latzava, you need to send to the army, to, to. All right. Moshe Rabbeinu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu told you, go and fight. 
You tell the Bnei Israel, you know what? No, 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 no. You go and fight. Cherev Lashem. When the Bnei Israel heard that cry, let me tell you a story. I think you'll understand a lot better. It's the Yalkut Shimoni, I, I believe, on Parshas, on, on Sefer Yehoshua that brings this Midrash. I don't remember the source. Um, the king of Armenia sent a letter to Yehoshua from the king of Armenia to the, the shepherd of, the, of Israel, Yehoshua, son of Nun. <clears throat> I don't want to come as a traitor and surprise you. I want you to be ready. Myself and the kings of Persia and Midi are coming to fight with you with an army that cannot be counted. He mentions there are over a million soldiers with animals, you know, with all the... The day Yoshua received the letter, he got very sad. And uh, he was Shavuos. So he didn't want to announce it and to inform the Bnei Israel because he wanted them to be happy. The, the day after Shavuos, he informed the Bnei Israel of what happened and they brush it off. He said, this guy wants to avenge the 31 kings of Canaan that Hashem helped us kill, Hashem is going to help us also and kill them. Wow. So Yoshua now is brazen and everything. He writes a letter from the shepherd of Israel, Yoshua, son of Nun, <coughs> <coughs> to the king of Armenia, Salma. I forgot the his, his, his name of his father. It was Salma, uh, his name. Don't come to soil my land. Don't worry, I'm coming to you. You don't have to come to me. Whoa. Someone receives such a letter, he falls off his chair. The Midrash says he fell off his chair. Because now all of a sudden he says, if he's so strong, if he's coming with his army, how much was his army? How many people? If I would give you a guess, 12,000. All the time when Bnei Israel go out to war, it's 12,000. 1,000 per Shevet, 1,000 per Shevet. That's why I feel the obligation to give you here the soid of 1,000. Most of the very big thing we do in our life are have that 1,000 involved. The number 1,000 is always involved. Maybe I'll give you a couple of examples at the end of this year. Um, so, it's called the side of the 10, Soida Sirios. You have the side of the seven, the side of, we saw the, the seventh with Pasha's Be'ar, with the Shemitah, and, 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 and also the days, the, the Oimer. This is called Soida Sirios. Uh, so anyway, Yoshua comes with 12,000. He's on the border of Armenia. Salma is getting informed that Yeshua has arrived and is called upon him to come out to war, as promised. How many people he have? He asked 12,000. What? If he only came with 12,000, means these guys are a beyond description. Salma start crying, tears up his clothes again, and he sob, sob, sob. His mother hears him and says, what's wrong with you? He said, what do you mean, what's wrong with me? I'm going to get killed. Yoshua came with 12,000 people. These are lions. They killed the 31 king of Canaan. You might say, yeah, you're a baby. Let me do my witchcraft and you'll be done with it. Um, so she does a witchcraft. See that witch? And, and, and she, she traps Yoshua and the army in three walls of Kishuf. And they cannot get out anymore. Yoshua sees the tsara, he takes a dove 
and he sends it to Yaniach Melech Reuven. Yaniach, the king of Reuven, that we are Bitsara and we need your help. Come with right away, come with soldiers uh, to help us, to save us. Yaniach receives the doves, sees this. He comes on his horse by Shevet Reuven, and uh, he, was, he was Shevet Reuven, God, and Chatsi Shevet Menashe that lived on the other side of the Jordan River. And he says, Cherev Lashem, Cherev Lashem. When they heard that name, Cherev Lashem was a mitzvah on everyone to go out to war. Oh, we're not trained. Go to war. It's Cherev Lashem. So that's what, so I mean, just to finish you the story, just wanted to give you the understanding what's Cherev Lashem. So Yaniach Melech Reuven goes there and um, and uh, start decimating the army, the, the armies of Salma. And he says, you know, like the going, they always say, come, no, 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 it's not fair. It's not fair. Let's stop, let's stop right here. We don't need to fight. We don't need to fight. Go back to your country. We're not coming anymore. Uh, he took his mother, threw her off the, the, the walls of the city because without, you know, without her, he, he could have gone to Yoshua and make peace with him. And because of her, now he had uh, his uh, cities destroyed by Yaniach Melech Reuven. And this is how they got freed. Yoshua and the 12,000. Um, I, mean, I can tell you stories on the Midrash. Now I have so many coming back to me down that path that uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting. So Moshe Rabbeinu, in one sense, this is what he tells the Bnei Israel. We, you are in that situation. Cherv Lashem, it's a mitzvah to go out. Anyone, though, it's anyone that didn't have even a machshava. Remember, Hirurim Raim is Keser Elyon when we give those Shirim. Seven nine is uh, it was seven ninety seven eighty six. He ruim raim it got equal so he affects the keser elyon. So he needed to have <coughs> from the bnei Israel only people that not only didn't sin physically, didn't even sin in the das, were totally remote, and these were the sherry. And again, I would explain why only bnei uh, uh, uh one thousand was required. That's what it is. Moshe Rabbeinu sends Pinchas. Totally, totally uh, negating basically the, 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 the tzibui that he received from HaKadosh Baruch It's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, I can go on and go on with questions on the, on the digduk, but there's no point here. Here, let, let's keep on a second on the puzzle. On the other thing, in Pastor Balak, uh, Pastor Pinchas, it says, Tar es the mitzvah, the order comes there. You need Tara means you have to hurt them. You don't kill them right away. Make them feel pain. You know, they have to feel the pain. Only the Midyanim, the Mayavim disappeared. The Hikisa Moisav. And now, boom, you're going to finish them up. Why? Mida can I get Mida? We're going to use Tara, same word here. So, because they also made you pain you. I don't know. We, we're going to have to explain this term. That's why I, I call it in red because it doesn't really make sense as a Mida can I get Mida. So, we have to unveil the plan and what was hiding behind it. Benichlehem, you know. We'll explain what he means. Repetition after repetition. Basically, it's almost Nichlem, it's 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 usually it's uh it's ideas. So you, you, you want to translate this in one word is bad ideas. I mean, what he means here, bad ideas, it doesn't fit the context. We didn't get any ideas from uh, the from the Midianim. Al devar peor. Usually you would translate this on the behalf. Peor is an elin. It's a piece of wood or a stone made out of stone. I don't care what it is. Does it speak? No. So why do you say devar? Devar means 
we have Bidvar Bilam below, Bilam on the idea of Bilam, he told them because he speaks, but Peor speaks. I didn't know that stones or piece of wood can speak. The Aldevar Cosby, oh, this one we know her. What did she say that it's not written in the Torah? Because also here, now we're not going to call her Bas Sur, which is Balak. No. Nesi Midian Achoisam. A prince of Midian, their sister. But Balak is Melech Moyov. How can it be that he's from Midian? Hamuka Beyoim Hamagefa. Oh, thank you, thank you for reminding me because there's so many Cosbys in the Torah that we, we made a mistake in which one we're talking about. That the one that was uh, killed during the Magefa. Oh, we're not done enough with Aldevar Peor once, not understanding. The Pasuk is going to repeat it one more time, Aldevar Peor. Oh, you think that's it? No. Hen Heina, these are the one, how you live in Israel, this last one. Hen how you? What do you mean, Hen Heina, how you? Live in Israel, Bidvar Bilam, so he was on the idea of Bilam. Limsar Mal Bashem, for those who remember what we explained last week, Limsar Mal Bashem, I will repeat. Oh, one more time, Al Devar Peor. This Peor must really have uh, some kind of uh, mouth, I mean, uh, mouth diarrhea because it speaks a lot. Vatehi Hamageva. Again, the Yehu Al Midian, there will be, and Vatehi Hamageva. The Mageva will be. Ba'ada Hashem. Oh, we're not talking about Israel. So far, it was Nikmas Israel, Aam Bnei Israel. No, Ba'ada Hashem. What's going on here? What is the pasuk? What did what did the Torah hide us? That's basically not not present and not upfront for us to understand. The Zayar HaKadosh says that in truth, when we started Parshas Balak, it says, Vaya Balak ben Sipoyer. So what he means, Vaya, and he doesn't mention every Mefarish asked this question, what did he see? So the Zayar says that the Shechina showed him the, the, the Geula Shlema of the Bnei Israel and the super vengeance on the nations that made us suffer. So he was warned. The Zaya says, Balak was a tremendous Chacham, much bigger than Bilam. Not only he was much bigger than Bilam, but in witchcraft, he was the biggest that ever existed. In sorcery, Bilam was the biggest. But in Chachma, Balak was tremendous. He knew the path in Shemaim and everything. He was a bucking Kabbalah like crazy. He was a tremendous Mikubo. He realized that the source of evil is from Amalek. And if he paired, we spoke a bit about it last week, and if he would pair with Bilam, then he would be able to, to tap into that, that source. And with that, him, Bilam, and Amalek together, they would be able to overcome the Ben Israel. Why? Because Balak, the last two letters, Alamet Kuf, Bilam. The two letters are Amalek. The, the, the last two letters are Am. First, two, first letters of Amalek are in Bilam. Am. Lamed Kuf, the last two letters of Amalek are in Balak. Amalek. So the two together form Amalek with them. So there are three rather than two. And at that point, the Zikne Midian and the Zikne Moyav, they came up with that idea that they have to send out women 
to trap the Bene Israel. Only through that, the Bene Israel can get affected. The Gemara in Shabbos says that Kadosh Bochu created five fears. There's five fears in the world. One of them is the weak and the strong. An example, the Yutush, which is a mosquito, it's probably a special African mos mosquito, on the elephant. The small fish on the whale. The, the, if you're here, you know how to say hirondelle in English, you tell me, it's a bird, it's a nice bird on the, not, you know, you find it a lot of them in the barns, you know, connected to the ceiling, between the ceiling and the walls. They love barns, these birds. And very beautiful birds always fly, has a very nice way of flying. It's not an owl. No, uh... no, no, no. It's um, Sanunis in Hebrew. Google me in the meantime, Sanunis. Uh, so, so, and the eagle is dead scared of that bird. What's the soil in there? How can, how can a little fly, a mosquito, scare a multi-tone mountain of flesh. How can a mosquito scare an elephant? You just take his trump with the power of the water, you know, with the pressure, the mosquito is gone. Why, why are you scared, elephant? Well, open your, open your big jaw, open your mouth, swallow the fish. <coughs> why are you scared? I forgot uh, on my head where the lion is scared of. Also a small, very small animal. And uh, the scorpion is also scared of the tiny little, little nothing. Runs for his life. When he sees that, they run for their life. What is the problem? This is, you see, this, we, we, met, we just mentioned a few minutes ago, the Zoya saying that the idea of Znus came from came from uh, the Zikne Moyav and Zikne Midya. In the Pasuk, it says Bidvar Bilam. It's Bilam who, who gave them the idea. How can the Zoya flagrantly, you know, disregard that Pasuk? How can he go against a clear apostle. This Gemara would explain it. What the weak does to the strong is fear. When you put that fear into them, they turn their strength becomes their own enemy. So basically they turn their strength on upon themselves. When the elephant starts fearing, he starts running like a crazy. Automatically, all his thoughts are now to escape. He uses all his power to run. Now you have a crevice, you have a hole, you have a trunk, boom. The elephant is dead. The Yitush never killed the elephant. He used the power of an elephant against him. What is the whale doing? When he sees this, he runs towards shallow water because he knows that fish don't like shallow water. And then he projects himself on the, on the beach, on the sand. And I tell him, you see, I got you. you. You can't reach me here. You cannot do that. You need a lot of power to jump, yes. But you need a lot of people to push you back in the water. And there's none of them. So. The, 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 the whale is going to dry up and die on the beach where he thought he escaped. His escape is basically his own uh, death certificate. 
Bilam says, you're Chacham Balak. You need it. He says, let me, you know what? I, I want to tell you that little story again. Why was Balak so scared of the Bnei Israel? Balak was one of the generals from Sichon. Before, you know, before they arrived to Moab, they had Sichon, then Oig, the giant, you couldn't see the sun when they were standing up. So he was one of the generals. They were the guardians of all these cities, of, of all these kings, and all these kings used to pay them a tribute in order to defend them. So everybody was so sure, nothing to worry, even of the mighty Jews that be the Egyptian, nobody can fight the, the giants. Come the Jews, nobody understand what happened. The army was standing and everything, all of a sudden you hear tumul and everybody's dead and Sichon is dead. I mean, you don't even have an image and Balak is a chacham. You know, something is fishy here. Something is not normal. I mean, it's not this old man that you can see this, the, the, the sword is still in it, uh, whatever it's called. And what happened? He knew Hashem fights for them. When Bnei Yisrael go out is 12,000, we're gonna see that, that, that Malachim come and fight. So had tremendous fear. So he was very receptive in order to be able to turn the strength into their weakness. You remember last week we went, uh, we're gonna take it to the next level now. You remember last week we went in these three letters and we explained that Besoicham is a Baruch who is right here. So, yeah, here, still from Rashi. When you take here, Kichilel Yehuda Kodesh, when this said by Yermia, Kichilel Yehuda, Yehuda, uh, to make it Chilel, to, to transgress, Koydesh Hashem, the Koydesh of Akadosh Bochu, Asher Ahev that he loved, Ubal Bas El Necha. Another time I'll give you a, 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 a beer on this passage, not tonight, because we, 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 we can stay on it. What it means, Ubal, a shikza, yeah, okay. What it means, Bas El Necha, another God, the daughter of another God. That's how you call a shikza. So anyway, there's a lot of soydes in this pasuk, but the main thing is kichilel Yehuda Kodesh. Here we go. Five hundred and one. Here we coming into here. Any time that you mechal Kodesh Hashem, automatically you lost your pnimius Akodesh Baruch It says in the pasuk. I don't know if I brought it. Uh, no. No. Okay, it says in the Pasuk, your house, your campment, your 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 oil house should be Kadesh, Velo Yire Becha Ervas Davar, and and it shouldn't be anything um, improper into Erva Veshav. Why? Because otherwise Veshav Macharecha. And Veshav Me'acharecha, where is my Israel? Equals Eloike Yisrael. Eloike, HaKadosh Baruch Hu very rarely calls himself Eloike Yisrael. But once he is Eloike Yisrael, it means he's here. It means the power here is tremendous because he calls them, he calls ourselves Li. Li is Gematria Doidi. Ani le doidi ve doidi li. But doidi is li. 
So, so we know that it, it's a tremendous word. Yisrael is a tremendous word. Akadosh Baruch Hu is here. So Bilam said, we have to use the weakness. Since we know that, we have to use that weakness. And this weakness, we have to put here, Peoyer. Now, how do we do that? So at the beginning, they said, the ultimate goal is to chile, Yehuda. Yehuda has to be mechal, Kodesh Hashem is called bris Kodesh. You remember the chida last week? Lim sor ma'al. Ma'al, these are the foundation of B'nai Yisrael. Ma'al is me'or, the breeze, enaim, the eyes, loshen, the pay. Altogether is 892. 892, if you calculate Maves, that, that Bilam wanted to bring to B'nai Yisrael, Maves equals 446 times two, because there are two worlds. These, transgressing these, Kill a person in this world and in the next world. Two times marvelous. That's what Bilam wanted to bring here. The Bnei Israel should have marvelous in this world, Chmai Tzlan, and in the next world. So the Midrash says, the Sefer Ayashar, says what they did at the beginning, they took the Bnei Smoya and they stayed out and they were basically outside by, by, by their tent, you know. And when a Jew would come, uh, you know, interested, they would come the others and uh, they would entice him at the end of the day, we are brothers, we are descendant of Lloyd, you descendant of Avram, we are cousin. Why don't you stay, make yourself comfortable, eat, and they would give them yain amoini, ammonite wine, which is very good wine, uh, sweet, and senses of a person are right away, he becomes shikr. And while he was shikr, he would be choyte. So it's not really, they had not succeeded the Bnei Smoyer. Bnei Smoyer of the Zoya says, that they were forced, the, one of the reason, the Zaya say that Moiavis veloi Moiavi, why a Moiavi will never come, can never become a Jew, it's because at that time, when the woman didn't want, the woman from Moab that didn't want to prostitute themselves. So what they started taking, they started taking and killing those who refused. The others got scared and they accepted reluctantly. So despite doing the wrong thing, but they did it reluctantly. And that's why there, there was no mysterious nefesh as we spoke last week, Lim, sorry from mysterious nefesh. And therefore their, their action didn't carry out a lot of weight. That's why they were only able to make the Bnei Israel sin at the time he was not even aware that he sinned. So Bilam fell. I'm oh, sorry, Balak fell in his plan. Bilam comes and tells him, Are you the one we call the big Chacham? Are you so intelligent? Where is this Gemara? This Gemara is in. It's in Sanhedrin. Uh, in there. Kuvav, maybe. When, when, when Moyav and Amain, which were always bad neighbors of the Bnei Israel, when they heard Yermiya, the Navi, Yermia the Navi tell them that Yerushalayim will be destroyed. They send messengers to Nebuchadnezzar in Babel and tell them, Nebuchadnezzar, it's your time, come up on Yerushalayim, you can get it. The Navi said, Nebuchadnezzar always, all his life, had tremendous respect for Yermia Navi. 
even when he says uh, Baal Shatzar, he's uh, whatever, he always told him, watch and respect the, the Navi. In, 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 in the Oil Gulim, when I knew, we knew who they were, both of them, it's a very amazing, the story makes a lot of sense, but for another time. Uh, the, so Nebuchadnezzar says, the heck no, I'm not coming on Jerusalem. I said, they have a mighty God, you know, no one can against him. He's the one that fight for them and no one can against him. What's the story of Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar was a general of the armies of Sisra. Sisra came with <coughs> a few million people in order at the time of Chizkiyahu uh, Amelech, the tzaddik, that he came on Erev Pesach and he besieged Jerusalem. Israel, Jerusalem, I'm not sure the Lashon of the Gemara. So they told Chizkiyahu, Chizkiyahu went on a mount and he saw a mount like this. He told people, ah, don't worry, go do your carbon Pesach. And the Bnei Israel went with a halal and singing and do carbon Pesach. Tell them Nebuchadnezzar during that night, we don't know what happened, but they were a war. There were five people left and I'm one of them. It was Sisra, his two sons. I don't remember the, the fifth. It was Nebuchadnezzar and Midrash says a six, whatever. It was me. I saw that this, I've never seen a war like this. It was butchery. So scary. The fear, the noise, the this. Well, these guys were in their houses feasting. You telling me, go on them? Oh, 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 oh. not gonna happen. <coughs> they send more messages. The Nabi keeps on saying. And he tells them now, God left you because you sinned. So they go tell him, God left them. He's not there anymore. And Ish Babais, there's no man in the house. The En Ish Ela Hashem, and there's only, we call Ish is Hashem because it says Ish Milchama. Tell them Nebuchadnezzar, hey, I know those people. God never goes too far away. As soon as they call him back, but well, he's coming back. He always goes out reluctant, reluctantly. As soon as they call upon him, he comes. I said, I'm not going. Until he heard the voice so many times in, in, in what he was sleeping, you know, the story. Uh, and he was saying to us, ah, you want to take me there to trap me and kill me like you killed Sisra? Same thing happened with Haman when he came to ask or to give the 10,000 uh, uh, silver coins, Shkalim, <coughs> to Achashverosh. Achashverosh told him, that you're an advisor of the king. This is, this is a, the, the best version of this is brought in a Midrash scholar, Midrash Abegurion. The Mr. Yakut Shem in Yakut Esther is also brought down, but the, the, the best version is in uh, Midrash Abegurion. That, that I mean, the whole between them, you can see the fear that Kodesh Bochu instilled in this case. This is what Bilam tells Bala. Don't you know, Paro with his might, Paro with his shafim, with his witchcraft, not only he was able to go out, fight the Bnei Israel down below, he was able to fight the Bnei Israel from above. As it says, Vayikach Sheshmeos Rechev Bachur, he took 600 young chariots. Who is called, Midrash says, who is called Bachur? The Sam, the Satan, the the Malachamavis. And Bnei Israel decimated them down below and up there. I said, are you, you want to confront those people? Are you out of your mind? Undermine them. That's the key. How do I undermine them? So Balak knew that the Nitzites of the Mashiach that's a vote of the Shla Kadosh, mind boggling this vote. He knew that the salvation of the Bnei Israel, he carried it inside him. <coughs> he had such a blind hatred that 
he, if he could make a surgery upon himself, take it out so he makes sure he doesn't go there, how do we know this? The Gemara tells us that when Pinchas went, went um, before killing Zimri, Zimri did had 424 times intercourse with Cosby. And Pinchas waited so he gave, because uh, Zimri Ben Gera was tremendously strong. And Pinchas was very scared of him. So he waited till he got weak. Why 424? Why not 423? Why not 425? Why 424? 424 is the Gematria Mashiach ben David. Thinking she is the, the, the daughter of Balak. See, so, and they're coming from the first daughter of Lot, where the Mashiach is going to come through. In that case, I'm going to bring Mashiach. But he was mistaken there. Sometimes you have good ideas and you feel in the heart it feels right. But we have halachas. You have a Moshe Rabbeinu and you have to ask him. Without asking Moshe Rabbeinu, there's nothing you can do. All you did is... And Bilam tells him, you have that. And we have Moshe Rabbeinu. That's why he sent his daughter. The Zohar Kodesh says that she was ordered Cosby. And that's why she, her name was Shalnai, Cosby Bastur, or Gimatria Shalnai. I mentioned that on Pasha's Balak. So, so Cosby is because she was Mechazev. She, she, she didn't listen. She, she, she didn't pay attention to the words of her father. She was not allowed to go with anyone but Moshe Rabbeinu. And she went for, for, Z, for Zimri. So, so uh, that's why she turned to be Cosby. So Cosby was supposed to entice Moshe Rabbeinu. What would have happened what in their mind would have happened if Moshe Rabbeinu Chadashah would fall? What, what's, okay, we should even speak like this. Like Bilam, we're going to call him. Bilam would, would, would sin. What would have happened? There was no future for the Bnei Israel. The Gemara in Chulin says, I would like to show you this, because this is, you're going to see it many, many times in the Torah, in the Mefashim. At least you should know there is a tremendous source for it. I'm sure I wrote it. Ah. Oh. It says after the Mabul, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Vayoymer Hashem lo yadun ruchi ba'adam le'oilam Beshagam Hubasai, because at the end of the day, the Rahu say, I can't get angry anymore on people because they are just flesh. This is what he decided that they're going to live only uh, 120 years. The Gemara in Chulin asks, How do we know? Where do we learn Moshe Rabbeinu from the Torah? The Gemara says in this Pasuk, Beshagam Hubasa. You see Moshe, you here? Beshagam Hubasa. That's the answer of the Gemara. Beshagam equals 345, equal Moshe Rabbeinu. <laughs> Another reason that Yeshi Chazal always talking in Remazim, in, in, in Gematrius. But look at this one. Beshagam hu basar equals Shishim Reboy, equals 859 Shishim Reboy. As we spoke last week in about Vayeshev uh, Israel Bashitim, that Am Israel, despite despite uh, being enticed and everything, because this is gematria by Satan, we said this this sat tight. Vayeshev Israel gematria shishim riboy. There are two shishim riboy. One shishim riboy. Moshe Rabbeinu. One shishim riboy. Am Israel. And this is 
So we stand on two feet. Those are the two feet. If Chaz Vesharam one foot falls, it's a tremendous tragedy. And both, then it's, it's the end of us. There's, there's a lot of uh, Midrashim about also Bashitim. I don't make justice by saying it's just, uh, the Midrash says it's a, the, the Nachal Shitim has a water of the Yetzer Hara that enticed right away to Znus. But all the nations around there were tremendous um, in Tuznus. Anyway, that's not the, the, the point of the shir today. So let's go back on our point. So now we have Bilam giving an idea. Okay, we need to trap Moshe because Moshe represents the Shishim Rebo of Israel. So we only have to have one target. And we're not going to give them somehow the Mashiach. Make sure that it doesn't go from you over there. It's a lot of assumption, right? Right, that I'm making here. I mean, I took it from two Zoya, but still, telling a story like this, it'd be nice. It's a nice story, but it says nowhere in the pasuk. It says, "Sare samidyanim." What did they do to you? Ki soyrerim hem lachem. Ki tzerim hem lachem equals 705. Equals Moshe Mashiach ben David. Exactly. You see that now the Pasuk is hinting us, not telling us what they have done. And the Zoya explained the machshava of Bilam and the machshava of Bilam fits exactly in the word in a lotion we could not explain before. In here is hinted their intention to be machshil Moshe Rabbeinu and to be machshil the uh, and to prevent the Bnei Israel from having the Mashiach Ben David. This was the main idea. This is Al Devar Bilam. We had a previous idea from the Zikne Midian and the Zikne Moyav. Now, Bilam took it to way another league, way another league. Then it says, Acha te asef after talking about this Midianim, take a vengeance. And then you will pass away. What do you mean you will pass away? There's a tremendous Megale Amukes here. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. The Satan came to HaKadosh Baruch Hu with a complaint. It says in your holy Torah, it says, Lo shor when, when a shor threshes, you're not allowed to muzzle it. No, you have to let him eat. When Yitzcha came upon the Mizbeach, he belonged already at that point. HaKadosh Baruch Hu had said, Avram needs to shecht him until he stopped him, right? But when he came upon the Mizbeach, he was still under the order to shecht him. He came to the world of the Malach HaMavis. Meaning, not that he will die by the Malach HaMavis, but he I mean he was already not in this world, you know, fighting the Malach HaMavis, whichever one you want to put him, the Malach HaMavis at the Tainan HaKadosh Bochu, Loi Sachsom Shoyer Bedisho Yu Omi Yitzchak. Says the Midrash, Iyov was the payback for Yitzchak. 383 years after the, 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 the Mice of Avram, came Eov, and Eo was given to the Malach as We all know the story. Hashem tells Moshe Rabbeinu, the letters of Moves were already flying. Pinchas was able to take the Mem out. Remember last week, flying, taking the Mem out of Moves because this, 
Bilam wanted to put Mavis together. You know how Mavis come from, right? I don't know. Open your microphone. I don't know if you uh, if you want me to say it. I'll say it. Otherwise, we'll just go to our to the vault. Yeah. So, anyway, so the Malacha Mavis now again has a tiny loisach some sherbedisho. I own the Bene Israel. They were supposed to die. They're seen. I was already there. You cannot take away my food. HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells Moshe Rabbeinu, you are worth 600,000. You are going to be the Kapara. You're going to be living because of that scene. That's exactly what the Pasuk is hinting here. The Mavis, so Bilam, with all his ideas, that didn't carry out, yes, they carried out on the 600,000 worth B'nai Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu was taken away from us because of this. Let me finish on a, on a note here I would like to show you. I'm sorry, I said Mashiach was here. No, Mashiach is 770 because I remember Lubavitch. Uh, Mashiach Moshe equals 770. It's on here. Bilam. What was the idea of Bilam is to attack Moshe and, and prevent them from having a geula. And that would be, you know, by, by integrating Aldevar Peor. Aldeva Peir is Erva. Once you enter the clip of Erva, you know, without going into it, there's a tremendous Zayar. Uh, I was not planning to tell you anything like this tonight, but um, since, since you win the three weeks and everything, th there is a, a tremendous uh, Zayar in Pasha's Pikude, I believe, Resh Samech Zayin and Um he talks about all the different chambers of the Tumor, the Hecholos. The same way we have the Hecholos of Kedusha, we have Hecholos of Tumor. And the fifth one is the worst. Mayhem. Don't want to know what's going on there. Really scary. Malachamavis lives there. You, you don't want to know. Erva in full is 662 we saw last week. Ayin, Reish, Vav, Hey. We said it's, we said it, and when we say it's Vayachel Amli's noise, these words equal 662. Al Devar Peir equals 662. What they wanted to put, the clip of Erva, mayhem unleashes. July 4th in the bad terms unleashed on those. If you know which clippers and how powerful they are, death is a lot sweeter by billion of billions times than these clippers, what they do to a person. So just for the knowledge. And Kitsurim Hem Lachem, let me give you. Okay. Chachma Bina, Yud K. The world stands on this relationship. B'nai Israel draw their power from the union between Chachma and Bina called Yud K. Bilam wanted to interfere with the Znuth. The Erva is so powerful that usually the Klippers are already scared to go above the Malchus. Erva goes way higher. And he wanted to rescind that union. So it's of Israel can never make tshuva. Tshuva is here. This is higher. 
than the world of tshuva. They'll never be able to come back. Yud ke vav ke is here, ke ye is here. Yud, hey, the first yud ke, yud ke vav ke, ke ye. Look at this. Kitzirim hem lachem. Right here. In the yud ke, yud ke vav ke, ke ye. All they were trying to do is remove Hashem. Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu, when you fought Mitzrayim, you fought upward, in the upper world. Where were Moshe sitting with Amalek? He was sitting on the dune, on a rock, with his hands up. What was he doing? Fighting the Tsar of Amalek in Shammai. Because once you, you, you make them fall down on top, down here, they're like uh, worthless. They lose their strength. Yoshua went to fight down below on top is Moshe Rabbeinu fighting. Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, fight on top, send Pinchas below. Really? Where is it written? Nekoim is Pinchas with the Tumim. He told him, send Pinchas with the Urim with Tumim. Send him. That's Nekoim, the Nekama down below. By you, you fight on top. And this is what Moshe Rabbeinu did. And, and this is all hinted in his Tfila in Vaishchanan that he wanted HaKadosh Baruch to rescind exactly I don't have to be Vaishchan and Hashem by I don't want to go into Vaishchan right now, but in the words of his tefillah, every word goes against a taina from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, why I have to give you up because of the chet of the Bnei Israel. And he says, no, you don't have to. And he has a proof every time he comes up with the proof. So now we understand a little bit, you know, all the. What happened behind the scene, it was a fight against Moshe Rabbeinu, a fight in the name of Israel, a fight against Hashem, from Bilam Arasha and Balak the Rasha with the Klippa of Amalek. And why did they send Elef Lamate? Because all the Dinim, everything that evolves us, it's always the number 1,000. When we take Eloikim, what we call the back, which all the dinim, the worst dinim that he says come, it's called the, the square, the back. Every time we have kisaboy lotsural ear, when you come and you besiege a city, you're only allowed to go from three sides. Rashi says, because on the fourth side, you have to let them, to let them run away. On this milchama of Midian, no, Akadosh Baruch Hu came himself with his names, came on the four sides. Why did they deserve worse than Amalek? Because they wanted Amalek. Okay, he doesn't like God, he doesn't like the Jews. Why? Jealous. These, no, no, no. They want to affect us in this world and they want to affect us in the next world. They have no more room here. So I said the very important things happen in our life. When, you, when the chasson goes into the chupa, and the mitzvah is sheva brachas every night. Sheva brachas equals 1,000. It's not, I mean, these are, these are not things that uh, we need uh, just... Eilecho Hashem mekro Hashem this is the key when the Bnei Israel with the Koil Kol Yaakov, the way we have Xeris and everything, we may battle the 1,000, the same way there's a 1,000 on the good, there's a 1,000 on the bad. It's only with our voice. Only uh, in, uh, and that's why, you know, basically, because listen, Bnei Israel, I'm going very fast on the end just to give you an idea that there's plenty more depth. We have the halachas of, of, of Kashrus of Kalim, Dafka in the Parsha of Bilam. Why? They conquered Sichan before. 
So they, they, they are quiet already. They know these halachas. So what is the Torah mentioning only in that thing? Because you have to be my veer by Ash. Whenever someone has, and it's also 1,000, anytime there's something with two main sides, don't you think, oh, I'm going to cut it a call, you know, I'm going to cut it a deal. We're going to make a little bit of this. No, 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 no. Taviru Baesh, like the Paraduma, you have to make it a fair. Ashes. Then you have the 1,000. Now, if I have a handy good gematria to give you, I don't think I do on my, you know. Oh, that it's a number of 10. If you take Eser, that's the soid of the, the 10. Eser, Ayin, Shin, Resh, written like this, equals 1,000. Russia, which are the same letters turned, that's our 1,000. Just to show you the two sides. That's why my Eser, you draw from the 1,000. Whenever a person gives my son his money, the Dinim, cannot come to this money. There's no vengeance. That's it, this money is blessed. This money is prevented from being taken, you know, in escrow because you owe something else somewhere else. No, this money has my sir, it's over. Anything that you have done, if you take, uh, it's enough uh, for, uh, for the, I'd have to give a full share on the side of the Asterius. It's so deep. And this explain and, and, and that's why the tyrus of the Kadim were dafka there, because it's part of the side of the Acer. And the side of the Acer, it's either you decimate the other side or Chaz Shalom they take over. You can make any quarter to this side, to the, to the bad side. It has to be from the fourth side, you decimate it all together. <laughs>